Some people don't care how difficult the game is. They just want to obliterate it. Like, like Vazerol, for instance. I don't know if he's into the pay-to-win stuff. All I'm saying is that Vazerol, he likes to overgrind the heck out of stuff and just obliterate all the content. That's just how he plays games. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely... There was, there was a lot of... Oh, no, I got the... Pay to the surfboard, the really dumb surf surfboard. This thing is really dumb, by the way. It, it's just, it's cheesy and goofy and stupid. I think I, I need to look at the recap. I don't remember what I need to do. Synopsis, AKA the completely detailed story. Uh. I don't remember any of this. North of town, okay. Bum, 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 bum. I don't know, oh, it is actually the way to go. Nice. Let's uh hey, let's Eleanor. do a little story Abby thingy just to kind of created their tethered molochim, do they? You mean something besides our oaths? An oath is a magical formula that grants you power in exchange for binding you to a rule, right? Yes, though that is simplifying it a bit. When molochim receive human prayers, they bestow their blessings upon people in nature. Eisen told me that we molochim grow stronger when humans pray to us. Prayers and blessings? I've never heard of that. I used to think the same way as the other exorcists. Malakim are merely tools that allow us the use of arts. Yeah, that's what I figured. But he know me not is different. The exorcists all worship him. They have faith in his mighty power. And not only that, the people of this nation pray to the Empyrean for salvation, just as Artorius instructs them. Ah, I get it now. See the wheels turning? Do you, kiddo? Huh? Artorius founded the Abbey within the existing Church of the Empyreans, so that he could direct the people's thoughts towards Enominat, so that even while they lionize Artorius as their savior, they are made aware of Enominat's presence behind him. Everyone starts believing in Enominat. The prayers of the entire world go to him, <sighs> becoming God. his power. Like, After do, the do they have to over-explain it? Worship, yes. He becomes stronger than anyone today could imagine. The pieces do fit. Oaths, prayers, blessings, the demon blight. So much in this world is affected by matters of the heart. They hold magical power, both effective and meddlesome. We are truly going up against the rest of the entire world, aren't we? Don't look so troubled, Eleanor. I'm gonna do my best to get stronger. So believe in me. No. I am a Moloch, after all. Oh, Luffy said. You've become so brave so quickly. Have I? But you're still cute when you get embarrassed. Hey, why is your face so red? Huh? My face isn't red. My face isn't huh? red, Desu. So, uh... That's kind of an interesting little little tidbit of knowledge there. <clears throat> and and uh, as far as like grinding through side, side questing, yeah, I don't mind doing side quests and getting a little stronger as well. But that's like that's like actual content, you know? It's it's actual content. Like, yeah, hey, I'm doing side quests, you know, not not just like sitting there well, spinning around in no circles. Guards. I think it's a good thing or a bad thing. fighting the same I'd monster over and over again. I don't I don't care for in. that. But I understand that you know for like super bosses and stuff, you know, grinding is necessary, and I'm about it. But yeah, the whole. Uh, Side questing to get quests and items and cool stuff. I like that because it's actual, like I said, it's actual content. However, there is a really bad way of doing side questing still. Still, just because you have it doesn't mean it's good, you know? Like, uh, Type Zero was probably the worst side questing I've ever seen in a video game ever. FF Type Zero, that was the worst side questing. I, 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 I picked up side quests and while they did allow me to pick up more than one, it was like, go literally across the entire world that takes half an hour just to get there so you can, like, kill five monsters and then walk all the way back. Like, there was no, there was no, like, 
it was bad. It was really, really, really bad. Uh, mostly just because of the world design, though, not because of the quest system itself. Uh, but yeah, as long as it's content, I'm fine. I, I think FF15 did side questing pretty good. I'll finish this quick. And then they improved upon it. It was also kind of nice. One of the things I really appreciate about Final Fantasy XV was that they knew, you know, like at, at the release of their game, people had complaints about certain things and they fixed those things, you know. Chapter 13 was really annoying or, you know, this, you could only have one hunt at a time or something like that. And they fixed it. They, they changed it. They updated it. Come on, really? Yeah, I know, right? Really? Seriously? Jeez. You're strong, but I'm for deception. Die! Hurricane! You're wide open! Blossom next! Take that! Devour! But yeah, like they, they track the quest, it's it's clear what your objective is. You know, it's not overly ridiculous. It's yeah, that's that's good. Like basically World of Warcraft needs to be what all games quest tracking is like. And the FF15 covers a lot of the the, the good the the more important points on quest tracking and side questing. But World of Warcraft, like since like probably I think Cataclysm. It's probably the best quest tracking system I've ever that I've ever dealt with. Like you can have multiple quests, you can track multiple quests, and there's stuff there's stuff on the mini map that points you to it, and then there's stuff on the main map that shows you the area in which you need to complete the quest. So it's never this like stupid, crazy, long search the tiniest pocket of the entire world to try and figure out what you need to do. You know, it was, it's just, it's, it's good. It's intuitive. It's, it's, it makes you want to do it. You know, that's, that's the important thing. Good side questing makes you want to do the side questing. It shouldn't be a chore. I'll cut down anyone in my I'll cut down any great bonus what's that from I've never seen that little buff on the right before. I wonder what that's about. Must be sure are a, lot of a new item power here. unlocked or something. They're probably here to protect the Therian, right? One would assume. The exorcists controlling them can't be far then. Be careful. I played P I played FF15 originally on a, on a PS4 vanilla, and while I found the loading times to be pretty long, I thought I felt it was manageable, especially considering that like we we come from an era of like PlayStation discs. You know, where the loading time was ridiculous, like, on every game, you know? And so I just kind of got used to it. Not to mention, FF15 is kind of an open world, so it has to it has to load the entire world within a, within a pretty large radius from the player because of the view distance. So it has to load that all into memory for you. And that means loading times get a little bit longer. Unarmed? Hardly. These are deadly weapons. What'll it take to make you go all out? Uh... But yeah, I, I play on a PS4 Pro now with an, with an SSD, and the loading times are very fast. Very, very fast. But I never really had a problem with the, with the loading times before. Oh, 
If you're doing a lot of side questing and you're using fast travel a lot, yes. I won't improve yes, yes, by yes. fighting weaklings. I can I can definitely agree with that. If you're doing side questing and you're doing a lot of fast travel, like you are that can definitely get old fast. I, I agree there. Doing a lot of side questing this year in the Fiesta was awesome because uh, this was the first time I played FF15 with the PS4 Pro and an SSD. Oops. And it was amazing. It was like seconds for every loading. You know, it was really, really good. Come on, really? Why is my party changed again? I never changed my. Why does it keep changing Understood. my party? Let's do fine, fine. I'll join. You. Very well. Onward. Oh no. Oh. I'm not waiting. Leave it. Very well. Oh, you can actually walk around as whoever you want to as well by changing the leader. That's cool. Keep up. Velvet's way too cool looking. She's way too cool looking. Uh, everything about her aesthetic, I love. The long, the long black hair, the freaking torn up garb, the just the, everything about Velvet is a really good uh, character design. There's some rooms over there. I'm gonna lose my grade bonus though. A pro is, yeah, a pro with an SSD is, is insanely faster. Yes. It's it's so it's it's ridiculous how how much faster it is. I didn't think it would be as as good as it is to be honest. Uh, I was really interested in getting a PS4 Pro for streaming, and I wasn't like I wasn't really ready and willing to spend a lot of money, you know, to to make that kind of a smaller upgrade. Uh, thankfully, everybody came together and got it for me as a gift, which was amazing. And and now that I have it, I can say that it would have been worth it. Because it is so much faster, so much smoother, and visually the games look better on the platform as well. It's, it's just, it's really good. 320 cat spirits? Oh, dude, I gotta open that one. I, I gotta open that one. That one's gotta be amazing. Can we gonna make it? Ah, oh, I missed it. Let's get started. It's gonna be especially great because uh, for FF7 remake. We'll obviously have the PS4 Pro, and uh, with the SSD, so the load times and, and visually the game is gonna look the best it possibly can. It's just gonna be nice. I might have to up my bitrate on the stream a little bit. In fact, I gotta check what I'm at right now. What am I at for bitrate? Go. I should be at like 3,300. Uh, 3,400, yeah. And since I stream at, uh, I stream at 720p, 60 FPS, 3,400 is, is pretty fine. I might up it to, like, 4,800, but I don't really shouldn't need anything more than that. I'm just worried about my internet, because, uh, my internet's not the best. My internet's not the best. It's, it should be more than enough. Like, I used to stream at this quality before with, like, really bad internet. But I'm just afraid my ISP is going to be like, I can't believe they used more upload. And then start throttling me or something. If I start dropping frames, you know, that's worse, right? So... But I'm pretty sure you guys get a pretty damn fantastic picture regardless. Because I got a good capture card and, you know, still 720p at 60 FPS. Don't waste my time. 
Which, by the way, if you're streaming at anything higher than 720p, uh, unless you have godly internet, you're wasting everybody's time. <laughs> Including your own. Godly and reliable internet. No matter what game you're playing, if you're streaming at or anything over 720, you're, you're doing it wrong. Like, 1080p streaming is, like, for, uh, like, super special events. Or like god tier freaking internet, or streamers that have like I had no problems a, 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 a ridiculous audience kind of thing, you know. Everyone ready to play? PS5 is a super PS4 Pro, kind of, yeah. If if you're if you're not sure if you should get a PS4 Pro at this point, I would wait until PS5, you know, just in case, because uh, it will be able to natively play PS4 games. You know, it's it's basically a, a, a better PS4 Pro. But I mean, at the same time, like I stream, right? So like for me, it felt like a requirement. Especially with FF7 uh, Remake on the horizon, I we felt won, like I right? had to have it. Right? I can fight too. What's my definition of ridiculous? Uh, probably anything 10 up or more, which is kind of ridiculous for the states, I know. But even then, 10 up uh, is probably pretty close to not being able to handle 1080 up. That's 60 FPS anyway. I have Spectrum and I do not have 10 up. <laughs> I have 5 up. In fact, uh, it wasn't until last year. Be last year, I had 0.5 up. No joke, I've been streaming for, th I was streaming for three some or some odd years with 0.5 up. That was what I had. And last year they were, quote, upgrading the lines. And I have, no, I have the best package available in my area. It is the best package available in my area. See, the thing is, it has nothing to do with the company. It has to do with the area and the, and, and the, um the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, why can't I go there? Okay, weird. Uh, has to do with the, uh, infrastructure. And yes, I literally live in the mountains. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was well known. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't live in like the main part of the city, so the infrastructure I right hear is a bit off, a bit low. But either way, the point is, is that, you know, 10 is not the minimum. Anywhere. Maybe in a city, perhaps, but yeah. Thank you for the three million years of Twitch Prime, dude. How you been, man? How's things? Thank you for the 34 months of Twitch Prime. Uh-oh, we got a super monster coming in.
Well, I did all my combos and I didn't keep. There we go. I need to keep stun locking it so I can keep getting soul charges or whatever they're called. XP 96,000 gold? Holy shit! 101 grade. Wow. Item free victory over powerful full 96 grade. Dude, 101 grade? 101 grade is like. It's a lot. It's a lot of grade. I'm, for a Tails game, like when you win a normal battle, usually it's like 0.5 grade or something like that. That is, uh, it's a lot of grade. That's what that is. <laughs> not, not that you can really do much with grade. Grade, uh, so grade in Tails games usually is like a new game plus thing. Where it's like, the more grade you have, the more you can carry over to the next play or something like that, you know? Hey, what's up, Retro Phoenix? Doing fantastic. Got your registration in a hotel for Buckeye Speed Bash. You're gonna get uh, get to meet some of your longtime internet friends. Nice, nice, dude. Awesome. I know a couple of people that go there. Uh, Red Balloon Man and Aurelix usually go to that event, if I'm not mistaken. Try as they might, it won't change. The game looks fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's definitely fun. It's definitely fun to play. Absolutely. Oh, uh, finally can equip the better weapon than I have. I need to upgrade it, though. Back to Paralyze redu Reduction. Uh, thank you for the host, uh, Retro Phoenix. Oh, I like that. I, I like that. Uh, I want to get this just because it's faster to master it. Most of these titles just have like too much random stuff. I, I can't differentiate between one and the other 500. It's just too much random small stuff. I'll just take my equipment drop rate and be done with it.
I don't think that's true at all, Retro Phoenix. The price of consoles has been around there for quite some time. Uh, I don't think... I mean, $500 for a console is, is definitely high, but... I mean, what did the PS4 launch at, right? $500, if I'm not mistaken? I don't think they're in any fear of, of that affecting them negatively. Don't waste my time. Now you have to consider that inflation is a thing. Te technically, if if the PlayStation 5 releases at the same price that the PS4 launched at, Come on, that's really? technically less due to inflation. So no, I don't I have no, there's no problem with that. Yes, not everybody can afford it. Not everybody can get it when it comes out. Not everybody's going to be able to have one, but enough people will. And that's the, that's the only thing that matters. Is that like if you can't afford a PS5, they're not marketing to you anyway. You know? Just how does this? They'll the, like hardware costs money to 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 create, and they'll only be able to ship so many units on the on the first days anyway. And that's all they need, and they'll have plenty of uh, sales. I have no doubt that the PS5 will do just fine at a $500 launching price. The biggest thing is what what games launch with it, right? You know, if if they if they launch with really really bad launch titles, yeah, then, we, then there might be a problem. But you know. That's never really been that much of a, of a, of a deal breaker. Most of, most of the time, people just want to have the hardware as soon as it comes out. I was amazing, wasn't I? Sure. I, I usually have the stipulation of there needs to be five games on the platform that I want before I buy it. Uh, but my my uh, philosophy on that has changed as a streamer. It's basically, basically come down to if there's anything I want to play and I can afford it, then I get it. <laughs> you know? If there's anything I want on it that I want to stream and I can afford it, then I'll get it. So, if I can afford a PS5 when it comes out, I will get one. Well, I mean, I suppose it, come, it depends on what comes out on the PS5, but I, I, I have no doubt also that there will be a good number of exclusives that are worth owning on PS5 as well. Sony has always been really good about maintaining a good uh, relationship with uh, third-party developers and having good exclusives on their platform due to third party uh with third sorry with third party uh, developers which is something microsoft should do they should be more involved in third party developers to to introduce more meaningful exclusives on their platform like for instance horizon zero dawn what is that this nordal it looks a lot like grimoire and bienthu but there's something different about it that i can't quite put my finger on i agree those two are positively gloomy, but this doll seems calming, yet glamorous, too. Like I said, a quiet radiance. Yeah. You think so? I think it's more lethargic or absent-minded. Like I can't yes. tell what's going on in its head. Either way, I'm a thousand times cuter than that thing. What's cute about you? People who keep their faces <sighs> Well, who knows? The creepy. job interview might go your way, and then you'll have a nice job, and you'll be able to get one. I don't 